Okay, in this video we're going to look at a formulation of the chain rule for functions of more than one variable. So here I've written it out all properly, but we'll look at some smaller examples that make this a lot easier to follow. So let's suppose that y is a function of m variables, so it's f of x1 through xm, and then each xi is a function of n variables, so t1 through tn, then the partial derivative of the top variable, which is the dependent variable, with respect to one of the bottom variables, in other words, one of the independent variables, tj in this case, will be the sum from i equal 1 to m of this partial of y with respect to the intermediate variable xi times the partial derivative of the intermediate variable xi with respect to the independent variable tj. And often we look at this thing called the tree diagram for uh, these types of multivariable chain rule partial derivatives. And the idea is that you want to look, look for all of the branches from the top variable, the independent variable, to your desired uh, dependent variable. So for example, in this case, let's say we're trying to get to tj in all cases. So you would want to look for all paths from the top, in other words, from y down to tj. So notice we've got to take the derivative of y with respect to x1 and then the derivative of x1 with respect to tj. Then we have to take the derivative of y with respect to x2, the derivative of x2 with respect to tj, and then everything in the middle, and then finally the derivative of y with respect to xm, the derivative of xm with respect to tj. And then we add all of those up as given by the sum right here, and that will give us our partial derivative of y with respect to tj. So let's look a little smaller example real quick. So let's say that we have uh, this dependent variable w, and let's say that that is a function of x, y, and z, and let's say that x, y, and z are all functions of u and v. So x is a function of u and v, y is a function of u and v, and z is a function of u and v. So we can go ahead and make our tree diagram. So W is going to depend on X, it's going to depend on Y, and it's going to depend on Z. So here we have the dependent variable, some intermediate variables, X, Y, and Z. And each of these intermediate variables are going to depend on independent variables U and V. So X depends on U and V. Y depends on U and V. And Z depends on U and V. Now there are two partials that we can take uh, with respect to of w with respect to the bottom variables. We can take the partial of w with respect to u or v, and each of those will give us different paths from the top to the bottom in order to calculate that. So let's, for instance, calculate the derivative of w with respect to u, so the partial derivative. So that means we need to look for all paths from the top to the bottom variable variable that we want. So the first one would be given by this, and that will be the derivative of w with respect to x times the derivative of x with respect to u. So let's write that. So dw partial x partial x partial u. So that would be going down that first branch. Now next, we could go down the middle branch, so we could say uh, the partial with respect to y and then the partial of y with respect to u. So that's going to give us um, dw dy, I should be saying partial here, and then partial y with respect to u. So that's the next piece that we have. Okay, great. And then finally, we can achieve W by going down the rightmost branch as well. So we'll go to Z and then to U like that. Okay? So that's going to give us DW, DZ, DZ, DU. And then we could have a similar formula for the partials with respect to V. We would just like switch those U's out with the V's and we get the same thing. The tree diagram would look a little different though. Okay, good. I'm going to clean up the board and then we're going to do some examples with actual functions. 
Okay, so for our first example, we'll look at a function of two variables, z as a function of x and y. It's the square root of x squared minus y squared. And then x and y are each functions of a single variable t. So our tree diagram in this, play, in this case is the following. So z depends on x and y, x depends on t, y depends on t. So if we're taking the derivative of the top variable with respect to a bottom variable, we only have one possibility. There's only one variable at the bottom and that is t. And so we can write that as follows. So the derivative of z with respect to t, and notice it's no longer a partial derivative because there's a single variable at the bottom. So that is going to be the partial of z with respect to x times the derivative of x with respect to t plus the partial of z with respect to y times the derivative of y with respect to t. Now you just brush off your partial derivative skills. So the derivative of z with respect to x, well maybe it would be useful real quick to write this as x squared minus y squared to the half. Okay, good. So notice here, I think we're gonna get something like 2x over the square root of x squared minus y squared. So we'll get something like that. And then the derivative of x with respect to t is going to be 2e to the 2t. And then plus the derivative of z with respect to y. So notice the derivative with respect to y will be pretty similar to the derivative with respect to x. We just have a minus sign that's going to be introduced here. So this will be minus 2y over the square root of x squared minus y squared. And then times the derivative of y with respect to t. But that's going to be minus e to the minus t. Okay, good. So now let's do some simplification. So notice that these minus signs will cancel, and then we're gonna be left with uh, four um, x e to the t over the square root of x squared minus y squared um, plus two y e to the minus t over the square root of x squared minus y squared. Okay, and then the final thing to do is to substitute in these values for x and y. In other, in other words, we'll substitute in x equals e to the 2t and y equals e to the minus t. And that's going to give us, um, so there should be a 2t there. Let's see, that's going to give us 4e to the 4t right here. And then plus 2e to the minus 2t right there. And then notice we have common denominators, so I'm combining that. And then this is easy to see that this is the square root of e to the 4t minus e to the minus 2t. Okay, good. And so that would be our final answer. Okay, I'll clean up the board and then we'll do one with two independent variables. Okay, so let's say we've got this example. We have z as a function of these two variables, x and y, but then x and y are functions of the variables u and v. So our tree diagram in this case goes in the following way. So we have z at the top, that's our independent variable. Our intermediate variables are x and y, and our dependent variables down here at the bottom are u and v. So there's two types of partial derivatives here we can take, and maybe we'll take one carefully and just sketch the other. We can take the partial of z with respect to u, or the partial of z with respect to v, and we have two branches to achieve each of those. So let's notice that in order to find the partial of z with respect to u, we're going to need to go down these two branches. And so that will give us this orange. Okay. So let's see what we get there. So that's going to be the partial of z with respect to x times the partial of x with respect to u plus the partial of z with respect to y times the partial of y with respect to u. So now let's look at the partial of z with respect to x. So that's not too bad because we have a polynomial function here. So the derivative of this first part will be 2xy and then the derivative of the second part will be 3y squared. So 3y squared. So that's what we get for this guy right here. Is that? And then we have the partial of x with respect to u. So notice that that's just going to be 2u because v is a constant up in that world, 
Okay, good. And then the partial of z with respect to y, so that's going to give us plus x squared. The derivative of that guy is x squared if you take it with respect to y, and then plus 9xy squared. And now we have to take the partial of y with respect to u, but that's just going to be times 3. But now let's go ahead and plug in those values for x and y. So this is going to be a little bit lengthy, but we won't simplify it all the way. That's just simple algebra. So notice that's going to give us 2 times x, which is u squared minus v squared times y, which is 3u plus v. Good. Now plus 3y squared, so that's going to be plus 3 um, times 3 plus uh, u plus v squared. Good, and then all of that's times 2u. Okay, that's what we get there. And then for the second one, we'll get that's plus uh, x squared, but x is that guy up there. So we have u squared minus v squared squared plus 9 times x. So that's u squared minus v squared times y squared. So that's going to be 3u plus v squared. Good, and then that's times 3. Um, okay, good. And now you could simplify that um, and you'd be good to go. Okay, um, I think this is a good place to end it. I would say that if you wanted to take the derivative of z with respect to v, we're going to get the same thing here. We'll just take these partials with respect to v at the end. And that's just going to change the calculation, um, but not in a very difficult way. Okay, we're done.